little bit more maintenance on the ultimate camper I'm going to replace the brake shoes now there's two ways you can do this you can replace the whole backing plate on these and I'll show you a little bit later what happens there or you can replace the shoes replacing the backing plates is probably the simpler way four bolts a couple of little clevis pins two little um, wires to the uh, electric brakes um, replacing the brake shoes a little bit more maintenance a little bit more work involved um, they're probably a little bit cheaper too so these are the new brake shoes you need to make sure um, they're the right ones of course I'll check them very shortly but you also need to note on these brake shoes one side has a smaller amount of lining than the other see that one finishes there that one comes past same on that set so I've matched them up and we'll go have a look at the brakes now obviously you need to take the wheel off I've chocked the wheel on the other side so it won't move uh, ideally you wouldn't do this when your camp is set up all right you can see this shoe here has a fair bit of material it's not too bad but finish the actual brake material finishes there on the other side it comes past that little dent so there's more material on that shoe it comes all the way down here and you'll see on this shoe there's hardly any material left at all which is why I'm replacing these shoes so I need to make sure that these are the same they look physically to be the same size Appear to have the holes all in the right place on that shoe. And same with that shoe. So pulling these apart, that's not too hard, that's the um, magnet for the electric brakes. A little clip here just separate that that'll get the um, magnets right off after I've done that I'll take these little clips off and I'll show you how to do that once I um, separate the uh, magnet from this top spring now these little clips have a pin in the center it goes right through the backing plate so I usually put my finger on the back of the pin to stop it moving backwards then I just use a pair of uh, multi grips and I depress this round uh, plate which has a T in it I'll see if I can do that without depressing it uh, I'm gonna have to do that so I'm just gonna turn you off for a second all right I've um, depressed the outer clip I'll show you shortly you see that brake shoe is trying to come away I've got my finger on the back holding that pin so the spring comes off and you'll see like there's a little slot in there and the pin show you the pin there it is there it has a little flat end on it and that little flat end I'll show you this locates in the top at the moment they'll slip right through but if it's rotated like that it'll lock in and that's what holds the brake shoes in so I'm going to set them aside do both sides and um, I'll come back to you What's left to do now is just two springs, a top spring and the bottom spring. I think I'll go ahead and remove the bottom spring first because it's um, a lighter one than the top one. And I'm actually going to try and remove this uh, brake adjuster as well. What I didn't tell you is um, I should release the handbrake as well so the handbrakes aren't on. I'll also, um, once I get the new shoes on, I'll have to release or loosen off the cables as well because um, there'll be more material on and the way the brakes adjusted uh, the drum won't go back on but anyhow, to get these um, springs off what I use is a flathead screwdriver something simple and I'll leverage in and unclip that back clip and it'll flick out of the way and then that spring will come off just try and remember which way your springs are going on this one you'll see the top spring has a coils to the front this is sort of centrally located, that spring. 
but this spring has a, a clip coming through this side and goes back in towards the center on the right hand side or the rearward side so I'll get this clip off and we'll have another look yeah, that's that spring off just remember the little hook goes through towards the center of the camper on the rear and comes out to the outside on the front front shoe this bottom adjusting um, adjuster should just come out now Let's see if I can manage to do that so that's the adjuster out I'm actually going to pull this apart and clean it up and lightly lubricate it with some um, graphite grease and it's also handy to note which way these adjust because I'll need to uh, adjust the brakes brake shoes when they're on and also to note where this star wheel is in relation to little um, grommets in the back there's actually two on the backing plate here so I need to know where that star wheel is in relation to those grommets on the back so I know which hole to go into on this adjuster I know that the star wheel needs to be rotated if I'm looking at from the rear not the way we are at the moment it needs to be adjusted so that the star wheel is lifted up as I'm turning it there and it'll actually spread this adjuster so this little star wheel is actually moving on the thread to the right if we go to the left like downwards from the rear it's closer to the left and that will come back in under spring pressure so I say I'm gonna take that off and I'll clean that thread up and I'll put a light smear of lithium grease on it so it just uh, rotates a little bit easier now that I've got to this position I'm going to try and get this spring off which shouldn't be too hard um, this is the handbrake pull and it goes back here and if that's pulled it'll actually um, push on a cam and I'll spread the brake shoes a bit under handbrake pressure that should just locate in the top shoe in that hole so it should just slide out so when I come back the spring will be removed and I'll probably have this brake shoe off so the rear brake shoe is off and you can see in this adjuster here or the handbrake uh, mechanism there's a little locating spot there that locates I might be able to see a wear mark on this just there that's the back side of the shoe so it sits in let me just show you just like that okay okay to get this front shoe off I'm actually going to have to disconnect the cable and there's a spring on the back take that spring off and this little lever will come right through and I'll separate off the shoe so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the cable remove that spring and when I come back to you you'll see me pull this part back out disconnected the handbrake cable I've actually got seven 16th inch retainers there I should mention that I'm satisfied with the overall length of my cable as well um, sometimes these can stretch so you might need to actually replace the cable or shorten it uh, if it's stretched I'd re probably replace it once I've uh, disconnected that this spring at the back here came off reasonably easy just going to leave it in the backing plate see the handbrake adjusting mechanism comes off with the shoe and it just slides through there it is actually locates in there I'll show you again just need to turn it at an angle and slide it in so I know that goes in that way and that's my second brake shoe off my replacement shoes make sure I get the right ones as mentioned um, one shoe has more material on it than the other so the rear rear shoe has more material the front shoe has less material so I'm gonna put the front shoe back on first of all I'm gonna put the handbrake pull handbrake adjuster mechanism in and it's just a reverse of what's happened any other maintenance that I need to do here um, well we'll probably give it a dust and a clean I reckon um, I've wiped the grease off this 
so there wouldn't be any dust and crap in there. Uh, I could probably clean up the locating uh, pin for the handbrakes. I could put a smear of um, graphite grease in there too if I wanted to. Now I did talk about replacing the whole rear, the whole backing plate. You'll see these four little studs here. On the other side of those, there's nuts. And um, you undo those four nuts, the whole backing plate comes off, but you actually need to also, again, disconnect the handbrake. And you also need to um, disconnect the electric brakes. And up in the cabling here, there'll be a joiner, whether it's soldered or crimped. You'll need to find where it is and uh, disconnect it. And when you buy new backing plates with all the brake mechanisms on, you'll have the wire hanging out the back and you'll need to re-solder or re-crimp it, whatever you do. A little bit quicker as I mentioned, uh, a little bit more expensive though. And as you've just seen, uh, it's reasonably quick just to replace the shoes or pull them off anyhow. It's probably taken me, including taking the wheel and the hub off, probably 15, 20 minutes with the filming and stuff. Anyhow. I'm going to go ahead and put this shoe back on and I'll come back to you then. I've brought you back now, I've got both brake shoes on, I still haven't hooked up the handbrake yet. And what I've done is I've actually located the brake shoes on with the retaining pins and um, springs. Got to make sure that the hand, there's a little pull in here for the handbrake. Oh, locating for the shoes. You gotta make sure that's centralised and you gotta make sure the top top of your shoes are located on that little pin up the top there as well. I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna connect the spring on the back for the handbrake and the handbrake cable back up to this little lever. You'll see I haven't put the adjusting pull back in and I haven't put the bottom spring in there and I haven't put the top spring in yet either just wanted to sh just wanted to show you this before I went any further I've got the spring on the back that's it there and I've got the cable set up to be done up what I've done is this cable needs to be loosened off because it's actually pulled the brake shoe off that locating square there so it's actually partially activated the handbrake I want to make sure this cable is completely loose so that the brake shoes sit nice and squarely on there before I um, go any further. Main handbrake cable comes from the handbrake lever up the front, runs through this channel, comes down to here. And on this camper, number 203, I have this um, set up with a little roller there with a cable going to each side. There's an adjusting bolt there and you can see it goes all the way up the center there so what I want to do is I actually want to loosen this cable off which will actually move it forward that way so I need to undo this locking nut undo this locking um, knob and then screw that bolt which has that shaft on it obviously so I'm undoing it now the way I'm going to do the releasing is obviously I can't get the spanner in there is I've just lock that little knob up to that nut there and I'll just um, turn that nut this nut here I'll show you it's a 17 mil this one there and I'll just turn it anti-clockwise and you'll see it screwing out of there Any clockwise, you'll see that it's uh, screwing out. I can tell that probably there's probably about three or four threads there that have come out to the right. <coughs> I'm going to keep on going until that's really loose. You get to a stage where you can actually just turn it by hand. And you can see uh, that's where it was screwed up to, so I've released all that thread. That's all pretty loose now. So those brakes sh should be uh, centered on that. That top pin again, we'll go have a look. Back to the shoes, you see it's all uh, located up nice and neatly there now. Okay, I'm going to put the um, pull back in. Uh, first of all, I'm going to give it a clean, as I mentioned previously. I'm just going to use a wire brush to clean up the thread and put a little bit of lithium grease on it, screw it back up, and um, stick it in here before I do the springs. 
only the tiniest amount of lithium grease on that just make sure that that uh, adjusting star wheel runs up and down the thread nice and easily similar back together and I'll stick it back in there and I'll come back and um, put the springs on top spring probably the toughest because it's got a really short leverage point in here or clip point uh, I used to use on trucks just um, flip set screwdriver and leverage them back into the hole and this one I've used uh, vice grips having the um, shoes pinned in is probably a good idea and you can see it's just sitting there at the moment and I'll just push it back in and they'll be located then I'll do the bottom spring bottom spring a lot easier I just used our uh, multi grips um, located the back um, part of the spring and flip that over um, that just goes in there located the uh, electric brake cable back up with that little clip tighten it up make sure there's no gap between it so it won't fall off the spring or the cable won't fall out of it either um, uh, I've already done a video on replacing bearings um, and I might have in that one talked about adjusting the bearings as well so I'm not going to rehash that at the moment that's um, the butt brakes replaced on this um, I'll do up the handbrake cable tight now and I'll go do the other side uh, when I come back to you um, oh, well, I'll have the hub back on um, I'll show you how to adjust the brakes or how I adjust the brakes anyhow remember we need to know where that star wheel is in relation to those little plugs in the back and it looks like it's the front plug there looks like it Yeah, it looks like that one would be the easiest one to get to there. So we might actually take him out. Put him somewhere we won't lose him. And we've got to push the star wheel up to separate that so it'll expand. That'll be adjustment. But I'll come back and I'll show you what I do to adjust the, the brakes. Once the brakes are adjusted, then uh, I'll show you how to uh, adjust the cable on the handbrake as well because we. Um, I want to adjust the brakes first of all before we adjust the handbrake cable. Well I've got to the stage where I've got the hub back on. The handbrake cable's nice and tight. Um, hubs are rotating nice and freely. There's no end play in it. It's just a slight amount of preload on the bearings, just a very slight amount. But I'd rather have preload than uh, free play. Yeah, that's that. Now adjusting the handbrake themselves. I've already talked to you about the star wheel and there's the access hole there I'm going to make sure the star wheel rotates up so that would be like a that sort of a motion with the um, screwdriver uh, it's going to be hard for me to hold the camera and do this at the same time what I intend to do is um, do the star wheel up as far as I can so it's locked the brakes up then I'm going to back them off probably um, and you can feel the little indentations on that star wheel probably about five or six clicks rotate the drum again then do it back up till it's locked again and what that does is in my mind anyhow is centralizes those hand brakes or those brake pads brake shoes so that they're sitting equidistance either side in respect to the drum surface then after the last lock up I'm going to back it off probably at the moment probably three to five turns until um, I don't have any um, direct contact with the shoes on the drum there may be a, a, a marginal amount which I can live with um, but I'll come back to it probably at that stage well, there's no mistaking, uh, these brakes aren't the easiest to adjust, but anyhow, at the moment I've got the drum locked up, this is the second time, so I'm going to back it off, and uh, I'll let you know how many, sort of those little um, segments on that star wheel that I back it off, and it's a matter of just feeling it with the screwdriver. Well, I've backed it off three of those little segments, and you can hear just a bit of a touch on the brakes. But it's uh, rotating pretty freely otherwise, and it just seems to be touching on one side. 
I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to stick the little cap back in there to keep some of the dust out. That's that side done. I'll put the wheel back on. Um, and I'll do the other side. I won't show you that. And we'll come back and adjust the handbrake. I wasn't going to show you this side, but um, I thought it'd be handy for you to know in here the magnet of uh, the brakes had broken, which is not uncommon. That happened on the other side quite a while ago. That's where the cables go there. They've just broken off. I'm not quite sure why that happens, but anyhow. These, this brake sets both sides. So last time I replaced them was um, just the hand brakes, and that's probably going seven or so years ago. So the cable comes through the backing plate with this little locking clamp here. You actually got to leverage it back in and then you'll see this little part here splits off. That actually locks the wires in to that little um, grommet. Stick them up here so I won't lose them. Uh, on the back you'll see this little clip here that's a um, retainer for the wires on the back as well. So take the um, plastic sheaf off. I'm going to put them back up there as well so I don't lose them. So what I need to do with this side is I need to locate where it joins inside this um, split tube. You don't have to go too far. There's some um, heat shrink there. So I'll pair that away and um, I'll actually cut it short. So the original wiring I'll keep and um, when I get to solder the new magnet in, if I can find one locally, I'll uh, unsolder those joints and resolder it with some heat shrink over the top and reassemble. I don't have the car at the moment so I'm not going to be doing too much. Um, I'll put these brakes back together anyhow. I won't be able to um, adjust the handbrake until I get a new magnet. Oh, well, mate turned up early which is great. Um, took me out to the trailer place. New magnet, wires, says right. Has all the right shapes and stuff so I'm going to rip her in. But um, as I mentioned earlier, my cruiser isn't here at the moment, and that's where my soldering iron is, so I won't be able to solder it up at the moment. So installing the magnet, that just sits on there behind, spring behind it, obviously. So I don't have a spring for the other side. I'll have to go back to that trailer shop and get a spring and pull the hub off and put the spring on the other side. A little clip on the um, electric brake actuator there, make sure the wires go through there. That little seek sort of clip on the spring there. I push that through and sort of judge the amount of wire I want inside and you remember that little grommet that I showed you before that's it there I've got it in the place I want now I'm just going to use some multi grips and crush that down so I can stick it back through there then I've got the other clip that goes into the back from the back it just secures the wires as well I'll show you that as well that's that little grommet crushed up just feed it back through. I'll probably use a um, flat blade screwdriver and just push that through now and I'll show you when I come back. There you go, that's in. Hopefully I'll see that in there. Now the back side of it with that little, I suppose it's like a little securing clamp. That's pretty simple, just feed the wires through that loop. These wires. All right, get you in the right angle. You can see the hole down the bottom here. There. I'm just going to push that little clip in. Click away, that's it, and see, I've paired the wires back, and that's where they're soldered up. So, there's not much I can do at the moment until I get the soldering on. So I'm going to push that out of the way so it's going to make it easier. I don't need that sheaf anymore, so it's rubbish. Don't forget the little 
um, boot thing, but I'm going to stick that on the jack. I've actually got it on two jacks at the moment because I didn't know how long I was going to be. That should, um, these wires and this uh, split tube should marry up with each other. Uh, and the original ultimate, so there used to be a little metal thing there that you run your loom through, but there's not anymore, so again, zippy ties. Uh, I've got zippy ties in the Land Cruiser, so I'll zippy tie that to that little bracket there just to keep it all out of the way so that it doesn't pick up rocks and stuff. And most of that wiring loom for the brakes should be protected by that split tube. And I'll run some zippy ties around that too to hold it in place. So now I'm going to put the hub back on, much like I did the other side. And if you want to know more about bearings and stuff, have a look at my video about replacing wheel bearings on the Ultimate. I'm pretty sure I talk about um, adjusting bearings and stuff there. Right hand wheel back on, handbrake adjustment. Make sure your levers all the way down, all the way down. Make sure your cable ties are tight. As you know, I've had to uh, loosen off and undo the left and right hand side to replace the brake shoes. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, what will I need? Seven for me, 17 mil ring open ender and pair of multi grips, I reckon. Yeah, pair of multi grips. Go back to that cable and that bolt assembly that I showed you earlier. See how loose it is. I'm going to um, now do it up. So clockwise. You can see it's finger tight at the moment. It's going to put you down for a moment. If you're not experienced with doing this, what I would probably do is make sure I had the wheels off the ground. Do this up. And make sure that when you're doing it up, you're not locking your wheels up. Alright. I've done this a few times, so... I know there's a fair bit of movement there, and you can see that, a lot of deflection. But another way I would check it is up at the handbrake. I want about you know, three or four clicks. So I'm getting... it's all the way down. Four clicks out of it. That's where I'm happy, but for... Um, the best result make sure you have the wheels off the ground do this up if you hear the brake shoes dragging more than they were after you've adjusted them you've done your handbrake up too much if you've done your handbrake up too much you'll be running on your brakes and you wear them out a bit faster not the end of the world unless you actually lock them up so I'm happy where that is at the moment I'm going to move that that nut there back down there to lock it up then undo this adjusting knob so I can unlock that nut and screw it back to the right so I lock up the bolt then I'll move the knob back that way as well and I'll show you when I finished well I've finished now and you got to make sure well I do anyhow these bolts don't turn around all these things will swivel so make sure they're all running sort of parallel to your ball or to your chassis the um, cable nuts and bolts, the tie lots facing down. That's facing um, horizontally with the chassis. So it's not digging into your chassis and binding up. Last thing I'll do is just check the handbrake, make sure I'm okay. That um, the way I've adjusted that's fine. I've got the wheels chocked at the moment. Um, see that over there? So I'll check the handbrake and we'll see how we are. So I try and aim for three or four clicks. Happy with that. The only thing left for me, as I've uh, earlier mentioned, is I've got to solder those that um, magnet up. And there's no positive or negative that I've noticed on those magnets. So it's just a matter of, in this case, pulling back that heat shrink. Um, unsoldering the existing wires tinning up the um, new wires and then making sure I get some heat shrink in there solder them together, heat shrink it put the split tube back over it and some zippy tyres and I'm done and um, that's the brake 
shoes replaced on this. Thanks for watching.